All right, boys and girls, we, uh, last day we were in class, we talked about how winds can affect climate. We talked about regional prevailing winds. Um, we've already talked about how latitude affects climate. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple of things. One, how water and winds work together to affect climate. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is how climate affects us and how climate changes us. Okay? So remember, we are in section number C. See right there. Okay, section number C, proximity. That's where we're going to start. So fill out your notes, draw. Okay, and we skip to this part on Friday, but we're going to fill this in right now. And then at the end, there's going to be a short multiple choice quiz, five questions, I believe. You're going to have to listen to the questions and see the questions and listen to the options. And you're going to use this thing here on the back. Okay, so everybody got it? All right, cool, good deal. Let's rock and roll. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how being close to a major body of water uh, helps to dictate the role or what a climate of an area is like. So what we're going to say is this. Um, <clears throat> north, the proximity of a major body of water plays a tremendous role in climate, especially near the ocean. Okay? Winds bring water in the form of precipitation. Okay? Winds, the ocean water evaporates, and the regional prevailing winds uh, move the water over the region and over the area. An example of this, and this goes in the blank, and the temperature, sorry, an example, the temperature of that precipitation depends on the body of water. For example, an example is Western Europe. That's the first blank in the notes right here. Western Europe. Everybody see that? Western Europe is an example of this. The climate of Western Europe is marine west coast, okay, which is a very warm climate, which is very um, temperate or much warmer than you would expect based on its latitude. It is that way because of the combination of the westerly winds, which are right here, and the North Atlantic Drift, which is a warm water ocean current that drifts that way. Okay? Another example of this is something called the rain shadow or orographic effect. Another example of how regional prevailing winds blow over a large body of water, like an ocean, and then hit a mountain range. Okay, the mountain blocks precipitation from going to the other side and drops all the rain on one side. Okay, so one side gets all the rain, one side doesn't. This is called the rain shadow, right here, rain shadow, or the orographic effect. Those go in the blank. So, using the box in your notes, I'm going to show you a picture right here on the screen, right in this area, all right, and you're going to draw the rain shadow effect on that big box in your notes. So, let's talk through this, all right, I'm going to... Bring the box up. I want you to draw it with your pencil. If you've got crayons, that's fine, or colored pencils, that's fine. But I want you to pause the video, and I want you to draw this right now on your mark. Get set. Let it stop spinning. And pause. Good. Now, let me explain this. So, what happens in the rain shadow effect, and I want you to draw all this, is that water evaporates from the ocean. Then the regional prevailing winds blow that air, blow that warm, moist air over this way. And then, when it hits a high mountain, it, the rain comes sliding down, okay? In order to go over the mountains, the clouds have to drop their precipitation, and they come down. What goes over, what carries on to the other side over here, is very dry, and that makes this area an arid or desert climate. An example of this are the mountains in California keep rain from getting to Nevada. That's why Nevada has a dry, arid climate. I don't have a map of that up here, but I can show you right here. So the regional prevailing winds blow this way. They hit these high mountains here, all right? And then Nevada right here is a dry, arid climate. Now, those regional prevailing winds keep going, and they hit the Rockies, and that also makes the Great Plains very dry. Now, there are two important vocabulary terms that you need to know on this. The side that receives the rain is called the windward side. Add this to your diagram. The side that re receives the rain and precipitation is called the windward side. So, water evaporates, the regional prevailing winds blow it over, hit the mountains, the water drops. That's the windward side. This side is moist, um, lush, gets lots of rain, really good a lot of times for growing crops. On the other side, that side is called the leeward side. The leeward side is opposite the wind and is the, the climate is usually arid, like in Nevada, or semi-arid, like up here in the Great Plains. So, we've talked a little bit about how winds and water combine. So, what I want you to do now, and you've already read some of this in your textbook, what I want you to do now is I want you to answer the question, 
Number three, okay, questions number 3A, all right, and 3A1 right here in your notes right now. So, again, we're going to pause the video, and then you guys are answer, going to answer that in the notes, and we'll pick up. Ready? Set. Pause. Good. Come on back. All right. Now, so there you see the warm North Atlantic stream or Gulf stream, North Atlantic drift. Again, regional prevailing winds blow this way, the mountains here in California, and again, the Rockies keep air, or rather moist air, from moving here, and that makes the central U.S. very dry. So let's talk about how climate affects us and a couple of different ways that climate affects us. So what I want you to think about in your notes, letter D, um, how might climate, or how does climate affect or change you? Write that answer in your notes right now on your market set. Go. Great. Good answer. Thanks for answering that. We'll talk a little bit about that more on Wednesday when I'm in class. Um, so number one, climate affects agriculture. So think about how climate is going to affect agriculture and how that's going to affect you and the things that go in a region. For example, a great example of this is it really affects what kind of crops can be grown in an area. Uh, the best example that we can think of this, or one of the examples that we can think of this, is rice needs lots of rain and really warm weather. That's why a lot of rice is grown in Southeast Asia, because it's warm, moist climate, lots of rain, and so it's really good for growing rice. Texas, by the way, is also very good for growing rice. South Carolina used to be really um, known for its rice plantations, among other things. But you see the rice paddies. Okay, there's something else here called terrace farming, but you see the rice. The fields are flooded, okay, and that's how they grow the rice. So one, rice needs lots of rain and warm weather to grow. So it became a primary crop in Asia. Now, how does it affect clothing? Think about how climate and weather affect your clothing. So one way that it affects you is that it, it helps to dictate what kind of clothes you wear and what kind of materials you wear. So, for example, wool is worn in a warm area. I'm sorry, wool is warm, so it's warm in cool, worn in cool weather climate. So places where it's cold, people are going to wear wool. Places that are hot, are going to be areas that grow cotton. Now, not only is it what we wear, but it is also things that, how we dress and the crops that are grown. Welcome back. Sorry about that. So, it affects what's grown there. Wool. Sheep are raised in places like, or alpacas are raised in places with cool climate. Sheep are raised in Scotland, for example, and you get those nice, thick wool socks. Cotton is grown in areas that have cool weather, or rather warm weather, Cotton is light and airy and cool. That's why it was grown in the American South. Um, even today, uh, parts of Virginia grow cotton. And it's also grown in Egypt or even today in India. is really known for growing cotton as a crop. Two, the color of your clothing uh, is dictated by what kind of weather and what the climate is. Dark colors tend to attract light. So in a cool weather climate, cold weather climate, people are going to wear dark clothes. helps keep them warm. On the other hand, think about... I, I love Hawaiian shirts. I love obnoxious Hawaiian shirts. The reason that those shirts are light in color is because they reflect the light and they are not very warm. So they bounce back all the sun's rays and they cool you off. So not only do they, you know, are they, do they look fun, at least in my opinion, but they also actually help to keep you cool. So now what I want you to think about, we've already talked about two different ways. So we've talked about how agriculture is impacted by climate, and we've also talked about how your clothes. Well, think about your house. How might a house in Alaska be different than a house in Seward Strath? What about a house in Jamaica? So go ahead and pause those and answer those questions on your book, in your notes, rather. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think about and look at that building that's right down there. Weather and climate dictate the type of housing that you're going to have, that you're going to live in. Okay, for example, this is called an A-frame chalet. That's the picture in your notes. An A-frame chalet has this big wide roof, so snow goes sliding off the roof. Now, a lot of times, you're going to see places like that up in Wintergreen or other ski resorts because they're meant to look like they're, they're in houses in the Alps. But places that get a lot of snow have these wide frame roofs uh, or wide roofs to help the snow distribute the weight of the snow and for it to slide off. Two. These things right here are called pilings or stilts. In some regions, pilings right here or stilts are used um, to support a house on its foundations. In Siberia, they have permafrost, which means the ground stays frozen pretty much all year round. So they have to dig way down below the permafrost to give the house a stable foundation. That's called a piling. 
This house is on stilts to hold it above the water so it doesn't flood when it rains or when it floods. Um, in Alaska, the Inuit or the natives lived in and built igloos. You might have built an igloo when we got all this snow here recently. Well, the reason they did that is because it's an easily or readily available building material. And, <coughs> excuse me, and it's a way that when they're out, they can set up and they can build that igloo to protect them when they're out hunting. All right. Nextly, a yurt. See this? This is called a yurt or a gurt. People live in these in Central Asia, not just Mongolia, but also in Central Asia because you can. it's a tent, basically. It's a big tent. So people tear them down, move wherever their crop, not their crops, but their herds are grazing, and that's how they go from place to place is they tear those things down, build them up, etc., and repeat the process as they're following their herds around. So they live in yurts, okay? And lastly but not leastly, this is called a fail, F-A-L-E. A really big one would be called an epic fail. Ha 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 ha. Alright, so this is a house that's found in the South Pacific, because in the South Pacific it's very warm. Find a, look, find a map. Think about Hawaii. Think about um, the islands down there, Tahiti, other places where you might want to go on vacation, Polynesia. Alright, these buildings have thatched roofs. And they don't have walls because it helps to keep them very cool during the summer. And there's lots of breeze. So what I want you to do is to draw a line there. And why might people want to live in those areas? All right. Last but not least today, we're going to talk about a couple of natural hazards. And this won't take long um, at all. first natural hazard that we're going to talk about is a hurricane. A hurricane is a natural disaster or a tropical storm that takes place in the Atlantic Ocean or east of the International Date Line. They hit the southeastern United States during the late summer um, and early fall portion when the Atlantic Ocean really heats up. So a hurricane is a tropical, st tropical storm in the Atlantic. Well, there's another kind of tropical storm, and that's called a typhoon. Typhoon, this is B, by the way, typhoons are simply another name for a hurricane. Now, typhoons occur in the Pacific Ocean and west of the International Date Line. Now, there's one other one that I want you to know about. So typhoon, tropical storm in the Pacific or west of the International Date Line. The last one I want you to know about is called, I'm not going to write it up here, but it's called a cyclone. A cyclone, here, I'll write it right here, maybe, yep, yeah, cyclone is a tropical storm that takes place in the Indian Ocean. Okay, now, nothing is different here. These are just Tropical storms, just like they're the same kind of storm, but they have different names. So cyclone, Indian Ocean, hurricanes, Atlantic Ocean, typhoon takes place in the Pacific, all right, or west of the internet, west of the international date line. So take a pause right now. Pause. No, oh, I'm sorry. Come back. Answer the questions in your book right now. Uh, read page 136 to 137 in your textbook and answer the question on hurricanes. There. Ready, set, pause. Good. Now that you're back, let's talk about a couple of other things. Let's talk about monsoons, which, which occur in southeastern and South Asia. Monsoons are seasonal winds that affect South and Southeast Asia. These winds bring rain or dry air, depending on the direction of the monsoon. Okay, these winds bring rain in the summer. Notice they're blowing over right here, warm bodies of water. So when they hit the hit the land, they're going to drop all their water. There are two mountain ranges called the Ghats right here that causes them to drop their water. All right, and they often cause a lot of flooding. Winter monsoons don't cause a lot of flooding because they simply are dry because they're blowing over land. So monsoons are seasonal winds in Southeast Southeast Asia that during the summer bring lots of rain, bring really heavy rain, and often cause massive floating, flooding. Lastly but not leastly, tornadoes. Tornadoes are a natural hazard that occur in the United States in the area called Tornado Alley, which is the central United States, Kansas, Missouri, central part of the U.S., and also a lot in the southern, southeastern U.S. Uh, there are violent thunderstorms that occur in the U.S. All right, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Oh, there it is, Tornado Alley, also known as Great Plains. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Make sure you get those notes down, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Oh, wait, we've got a quiz to do. So here's your video quiz. Part number one. So what I want you to do is I want you to take these questions out right here, right here, and just fill in. One through five is what we're going to do today, <coughs> and I'm going to give you the options. 
Which side of the mountains get the rain as part of the rain shadow effect? Is it A, leeward, B, windward, C, skyward, or D, wetward? Number two, what is the dominant climate of Europe because of the west-north Atlantic drift? Is it taiga, A, taiga, B, savanna, D, no, sorry, C, marine west coast, or D, humid subtropical? Question number two again, what is the dominant climate of Europe because of the north Atlantic drift? A, taiga, B, savanna, C, marine west coast, or D, humid subtropical? Question number three, which is not a way that climate affects us? Our clothing material, our clothing color, the crops that we can grow, or our shoe size. A, clothing material, B, clothing color, C, crops being grown, or D, our shoe size, which is not a way that climate affects us. A, material, C, clothing color, B, clothing color, C, crops grown, or D, shoe size. Next slide, question number four. Which type of architecture and housing is not matched with its location? Chalets found in the Alps. A. Chalets found in the Alps. B. Yurts in Mongolia. C. Fales in the South Pacific. <coughs> or D. Igloos in South Africa. So, which one is not matched properly with its location? A. Chalets in the Alps. B. Yurts in Mongolia. C. Fails in the South Pacific, or D. Igloos in South Africa. Lastly but not leastly, which natural hazard is not matched correctly with its location? A. Hurricanes found in the Atlantic Ocean. B. Typhoons found in the Indian Ocean. C. Monsoons in South and Southeast Asia. Or D. Tornadoes in the USA. Which natural hazard is not matched correctly with the location? A, hurricanes in the Atlantic, B, typhoons in the Indian Ocean, C, monsoons in South Asia, or D, tornadoes in the USA. All right? Hope you guys got a little something out of this. Make sure that you answer these on your sheet here, and I will talk to you guys when I get back on Wednesday. Bye.